some of you may know that when, when, I'm, uh, when I'm not an activist on behalf of national conservatism, uh, I, 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 I write books on the Bible and theology. And uh, I, I'm not going to say too much about it. Those of you who are interested are, of course, very welcome. Uh, but the interesting thing about, um, about the absence of the Bible from our culture is that it's actually something more. It's, it's an additional step beyond uh, not believing in God or, or, or not having received a religious tradition in your family. Because I would think, and you know, maybe it's because I'm a scholar of this subject, but I would think that a person could be you know, an, uh, an atheist and, and be certain in their disbelief and still think of uh, the Bible as a, you know, as a work or a, or a set of works of great literature that you could be proud of and study and learn from and quote the same way that we, you know, that we're proud of, uh, uh, of Greek philosophy and of medieval philosophy and of uh, modern works of, of uh, political theory and philosophy, whether they're conservative or liberal or otherwise. There are a great many uh, wonderful books that are cited and that have been cited for the last two days, but I have to tell you that 30, after 30 years of uh, teaching Bible in front of all sorts of audiences, and I'm talking about uh, uh, religious Christians and religious Jews and, and completely atheist audiences, and I, 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 I find it easy to, uh, to teach the Bible as a work of philosophy or political theory just so people know the ideas that are their inheritance. As, as nationalists, of course, one of the ideas that's of interest to us is the fact that uh, the, the, the idea of the independent nation, the idea of the independent nation has, uh, it, it has no Greek source. It has no Roman source. If, uh, if, I'm not saying this in any way to disparage Greek and Roman sources. They have their own virtues and advantages. But here we spent two days talking about uh, you know, the, the, the birth of the, the nation state system in Westphalia. All of this is true, but it's rare that you hear it mentioned that there's only one source on which the Westphalian system is based, and that's on biblical tradition. The, the idea of uh, that, that instead of world empires, that we should have freedom of nations, this is one of many ideas that are only biblical, that arrive in our tradition only from that source. And uh, so after 30 years of teaching this, I, you know, I, 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 I finally, uh, asked my, uh, my wife, Yael, who's sitting there, uh, a few, really, uh, a few weeks ago, a few days ago, I said, look, I just don't understand. Why is it that people are, you know, educated people refuse to, to learn Bible? They refuse to talk about it. Well, I mean, they, they, they can sit in an audience and have me talk about the importance of it, and they all applaud and they all nod, but they don't go home and read the Bible, and it doesn't change anything. The fact that I talk doesn't change anything. What's going on? And my wife could have said, well, you are maybe, what you're saying is just not that important, uh, but, but she didn't say that. Uh, she gave me another out, so that she's a good wife. So I want to share with you what she said. She said that, um, she said, you know, it's a, uh, it's a class thing. It's a, it's a, it, it's a question of uh, signaling how educated you are. Uh, that the more educated a person is, she proposed, the, the more it looks like uh, if they ever quote the Bible, if they talk about the Bible, it makes them look like they're uneducated. It signals to their environment that they're ignorant people, that they're foolish people. And so even religious people can come and give speeches about religion, even in conferences on religion, and still they don't quote the Bible. So that's a theory. I, I, I don't know if that's exactly right. I have a sense that something like that is right. I think that we conservatives, we nationalists, if we amongst ourselves, if we can't talk about the Bible, at least as a source for ideas, you know, if nothing more than that, as, as a great historical source, then, then I don't think we, I don't think we need 
look further for the question of why are we losing? Because if, if we can't quote the sources of our own ideas because we're embarrassed or afraid, then of course we're going to lose. So this is very similar to what Eva said about God. That it, you know, if, if we can't say God, then we'll lose. And I think the same thing's true about scripture. So um, I, I, just so that I can feel that a little bit of, of Bible was here, I'm going to say something very short. It's not long. I'm not gonna take up too much time about it. Uh, but I, I, I want to read a few biblical verses that are relevant historically and philosophically. They're relevant to our project. We've been speaking about, uh, we've been speaking about a horrific war uh, between nations, nations and empires that's taking place right now in, in, in lands not far from here. And the... Um, Uh, okay, look, anybody who doesn't want to hear it, it, it just, 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 it's been a good conference, just, just, just go, go out and get something to drink. I'm almost done, okay? Um, so I, I, I want to read you just a few biblical verses, and uh, I think you'll see immediately how relevant they are to us as political theory, as political philosophy, and, and also as religion and theology. So th this, is, this is from Ishayao, from the book of Isaiah. Um, I, 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 Isaiah is one of, the, one of the great visionaries of a world of independent nations. I, I mean, the truth is that all of, the, all of the Jewish prophets agree about this vision. There isn't really, there's a great deal of disagreement about almost every subject in the Bible, but on this subject, there's very little disagreement. So Isaiah says as follows. I'm sorry, I'm reading this upside down, sorry. Yes, In that day, there will be a great highway from Egypt to Assyria. Okay, now the, the world in which Isaiah is writing is a world in which these two great empires, Egypt and Assyria, each one claims that the God sent them to rule the world. And in the Bible, these two empires, they, they, they fight back and forth and they destroy the peoples in between. And Israel is one of the peoples in between. It's a small country in between Assyria and Egypt. And the Egyptians win and, and they, they destroy. And then the Assyrians win and they destroy. And the, the fall of the Jewish kingdom in the end is, 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 is the story of, of how, how the, you know, both the Mesopotamian and the Egyptian empires co cooperate to, to, to end up destroying the independent Israel and other small nations. So this should sound to you like something familiar. It's talking you know, as much about our day as it is about those days. And yet Isaiah has a vision, and he says, So there'll be this great highway connecting Assyria to Egypt, and the Egyptians will come to Assyria, and the Assyrians will come to Egypt. And they will pray together the Assyrians and the Egyptians will pray together. They, they will have enough in common so that they can travel between them. Instead of making war, they can travel between them and have enough in common so that they can pray together, to, to worship together. All right, so that's talking about Assyria and Egypt. Now he turns to Israel, to this, to this little country in between. And he says, Bayoma hu ye Israel shlishia. And he says, in that day, Israel will be a third, a third partner together with Egypt and Assyria. You know, it's like, it, it, it's like somebody, you know, somebody from Hungary today saying, and Hungary will be a partner with America and China or something like that. And maybe, maybe this is what, what the Hungarian Isaiah should be saying now. But that's what he's saying. He's saying in that day, instead of being just this, uh, th th this killing field, this field of destruction in th that empires play on, Israel will be able to be a partner with Assyria and Egypt. 
ביום ההוא יהיה ישראל לשלישייה למצרים ולאשור. ברכה בקרב הארץ. And Israel will be a blessing among the nations of the earth. אשר ברכו אדוני that God, and God will bless, I'm sorry, אשר ברכו אדוני צבאות לאמור, and God will bless Israel with the following blessing. Now listen carefully to this blessing that Israel is going to get from God in those days in the future. ברוך עמי מצרים. Blessed is my people Egypt. This is the God of Israel saying, Blessed is my people Egypt. ומסי ידי אשור. And the work of my hands Assyria. ונחלתי ישראל. And my inheritance Israel. Okay, so here we have a devastated country, a country that's, that's a little bit in, you know, in the condition of Ukraine, a country that's being devastated by invading empires. And Isaiah says, look, in the future, the world will be safe for small nations. This is the vision, that small nations will be able to be partners with these great empires. And that God, the God of Israel, will say, Egypt is blessed because it's my people. And Assyria is the work of my hands. And Israel is my inheritance. Now, this, this vision of a post-imperial world, and this is one of many, many, many such biblical sources. I'm only bringing you one. I promised it would be short. The Bible's long, but I'm short. But this, this vision, nothing like it exists in our Greek or Roman sources. It enters Christianity only through Israel, only through Judaism, only through the Jewish prophets. And it enters our discussions today when we speak, when we, we, when we revolt against the invasion of Russia into Ukraine, all of us are children of Isaiah. All of us are children of this inheritance, of this biblical idea, which we don't study in school anymore, and we don't study in university, and we don't dare to mention it in political activism, and we don't even mention it at conservatism conferences too much, because it's uncomfortable to us. And yet this is, this is where we came from. When we stand and we say, someday Russia will be able to coexist with Ukraine and it will not invade anymore, and Ukraine will be the equal of Russia, maybe not in size and strength, but they'll be able to, to, to have a common culture to a certain extent, a common God. They'll be able, there'll be a highway connecting them. They'll be able to pray together. This vision is a biblical vision only. It has no other source. And whether we're religious people or we're conservatives who think that maybe something has been lost and we're not sure exactly what, it, this is our inheritance. Anyway, I'm so happy that you came. This is, uh, 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 dis despite the, the certain disappointments, I think this has been a wonderful, wonderful event. We've had people from all over Europe and America and Israel and other countries uh, it, 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 uh, it, 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 it's a blessing. You're, all of you are a blessing to the, to the nations of Europe. And, um, and I'm excited that you're here. And I'm excited for this project that we're working on. And uh, I, I've met many new people. At each conference, I meet new people. I'm thrilled that so many students come. At each con conference, we have more students. And... Uh, uh, we, we have a, a splendid future. We have a splendid future that we're, we're moving towards. I welcome each of you to, uh, to write to us and to make suggestions and to help us organize what we're doing. And, uh, uh, and uh, above all, I, I ask um, uh, that uh, God shine his grace on each of your nations, uh, on, on your independence, on your families, and uh, that we together can move to something that is uh, far better uh, than, uh, than the current reality. Um, I believe in it, and uh, God bless you all. Thank you. <laughs>